quick video how the mid-mounted pivoting extruder system works. That's what I call it, mid-mounted pivoting extruder. For lack of a better name, a descriptive name, they're mounted about midway up the towers and they pivot and they're extruders. <laughs> Makes a bit of sense. Um, good surfaces, minimal stringing, um, good control in the hot zone compared to long Bowden. Um, in the melt zone, I should say, in the hot end. Um, so, this video is about how they pivot around. So I'm going to try and hold the camera still um, with the object in view so you can kind of see how they track the effector, how the how the short Bowden tube guides the f extruder outlet where the Bowden tube attaches guides it to point in the direction that the Bowden tube wants to have the slackest form running into the splitter mounted to the effector. Bowden tube's flexible. It's going to try to take its slackest form, its least radius, on its path from the effector to the extruder. With the extruder able to pivot and swing a bit in and out, I'm able to have a very short Bowden tube. The short Bowden tube and the short amount of filament from the extruder to the melt zone in the hot end on the effector allows for very good control, less um, less problems associated with a long Bowden tube, is how I would put it. Um, it feels almost like direct drive on an i3 clone I have. It really does seem to control oozing and stringing to just what's kind of normal with good retraction. Um, I think it makes the response of pressure increase and drop from the from pushing and pulling the filament into the melt zone, I think it makes the response quicker and better for life. Is better terminology. I'm not the full-on expert that some people are, but I'm getting some experience. I've been printing about a year and a half now, I guess. Maybe two years? I don't know. How long have I been printing? Not that. Um, so my 2015. Um, anyway, and then I, you know, I was around 3D printers in school. We had powder bed sintering printers, um, and I did see some FDM action from people that did the project for the FDM printers or brought in um, things for design classes that were done in FDM. But um, as far as owning my own. Maybe only a year and a couple of months. I thought it had been more, but yeah, I'm thinking maybe a year, uh, 14 months. Um, but having him at my design workstation, printing prototypes of small objects and larger multi-print objects, nearly daily, maybe even just daily, like maybe missed a couple of days out of those 14 months, but really printing all the time. So, a decent amount of experience, and I do think that this short Bowden tube setup is pretty viable, works very well on my mini causal size. Delta is not quite a mini causal, it's got some weird things going on. It's own linear motion system and design, you know, just it's cheap. For, for what I saw people getting with Delta's the mini causal size on 1515, I was like, man. It didn't look all that great, and I didn't want to invest in like four channel, really good rails for a printer this size. Um, the four channel preload meant for vertical applications are pretty expensive. Like the two channel kind of 130 bucks a set. Yeah, I don't know. People use them okay, but you can get results from this, and it's like six bucks worth of parts for a linear motion system. So I'm happy. I still want to build a super solid delta with like 20-40 extrusions 
really good rails, very large build area, 300 millimeter diameter or something. Um, and uh, yeah, that's a whole other project and that'll be, yeah, machine corners and all that. But for a printer this size, desktop, quick print of prototype parts, um, it seems very good for parts for like soft goods and things like that. I mean, prototyping metal parts and like, no, but um, for prototyping parts for like clips and buckles for soft goods or um, lighting, interior lighting, actually manufacturing interior lighting or manufacturing uh, consumer products with a tolerance to about 0.25 millimeter. This is great. This will do it. Um, they'll look square and they'll look well connected. The parting lines will be nice um, to a tolerance that equals most injection molded products. I mean, you got to go really high end to look for parting lines that are going to be better than what you get on this. Now, service quality, that's another thing. And you can paint and sand and make the prototypes look, you know, like they're injection molded or something. It's doable. It's a great little plastic prototype, um, you know, rapid prototyping for later manufacturing in a different methodology. It's a good system, and it was cheap. Um, the most expensive part is the 32-bit control board that you add did that to have auto calibration and uh, tower angle adjustment and bed mesh leveling and all this stuff that makes it print really well even though everything is kind of out of alignment. Towers are not perfectly vertical. There's some lean. I don't think there's any twist, but there is some lean. Um, it's been a pain in the butt to get the bed level like all the time. Aluminum flexes when it heats and cools, and it's just like, you know, you wake up in the morning and it's not quite level, and you got to readjust the little screws to make it level. Um, we'll see. I've just done some other things um, to make that maybe more easy, but I'm thinking just the bed kind of braced to the frame, but actually mounted on its own feet to whatever the printer's standing on might be better. Um, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Video's getting ranty again. This is mainly about the mid-mounted pivoting extruder. So let's keep the focus on those. Just let you watch how... I'm trying to keep the object in the effector in view and let you watch how the uh, extruders pivot around. Um, when it's on the outside edges, fairly synchronous, but then when it gets centered, um, they synchronize in a mirror fashion. Like something long printing front to back. Um, they kind of do, and they mirror each other. Um, I mean, it looks like they're mirroring each other here, but it's not reflective mirroring. It's like, um, what do they call it? What's the word? It's on the tip of my tongue in the modeling software. Not mirror synchronicity, but symmetry. There's mirror symmetry, and then there's identical symmetry. Mirror symmetry, you know, everything's reversed. Identical symmetry, everything's identical. So right on the center line front to back for the printer like this way if i'm printing something like this way front to back they'll do like a they'll they'll both be twisting in with a mirror symmetry reflective symmetry kind of pointing in and at each other but most of the time when they're going around and around they have the um an identical symmetry where they both point left or both point right um but the short Bowden tube is the modifier, the dampener, and the controller dictates what they do, and it makes it so that there's they're not trying to um, do anything too quickly or too crazily because it's um, a flexible piece of tubing like that acts as a spring-loaded um, system. Really, it allows the effector to point to the uh, slackest position for the Bowden tube with the least amount of radius between the effector and the extruder.
All right, it's getting ranchy long video again. I think that one I might be able to upload. Um, shouldn't be too boring. 10 minutes of effector swinging around. I mean, yeah, boring as hell to the average YouTube denzine. But um, anyway, that anybody that's building deltas might find this interesting just to watch. Might even turn the audio off and play some music and just watch it and try and clean what they can from short Bowden movement with splitter on a mini castle size delta. Uh, one thing to note, the splitter is tilted back at an angle to allow the tubing to clear the front rods because, you know, in some extreme areas of the build area, it's going to, like, come up and smack the tube and push against it, and I didn't want there to be any pressure, especially that short an area of tubing. Like, that would be a very short, maybe three, two inch, two to three inch section of Bowden then pressing on the arm. Um, seemed like it could maybe not be good, cause effector tilt or something, so... The splitter had to be tilted back a little bit, and there's a little section of um, PTFE that runs between the splitter down into the E3D V6 uh, hot end. It's the section of PTFE that goes down into the steel tube that connects the hot block to the um, to the radiator on the E3D. So that little bit of PTFE, just this little modest curve at the top, dives down in straight into the hot end, and that connects the splitter to the hot end. And there's room, I could have done two clamp fits in there, but I removed the top one, the bottom one's really irrelevant because the PTFE, you just kind of cut it oversized, try and put the splitter on with the mount. If it's not fitting, you shave off a little bit of the PTFE until it's just perfectly length to uh, to be down in the hot end fully secure up into the splitter fully secure um, and yeah so you don't need the little um, PTFE tubing pressure fitting that one in there is really it's uh, permanently attached to the top of an E3D V6 um, so just left it you know uh, pull out the little brass ring out of that aluminum that's impressed it in. Uh, so I just left it as is, but, but it's not needed there. Well, I mean, if I remove the splitter, I need it. So. Anyway, that's how that all works. Um, Alright, have a nice weekend.